Thank you. That was absolutely fascinating. Um, I've got a slightly tangential question. In the study of the, um, the ponytail and its movement up and down, can the findings and conclusions from that work be translated or does it relate in any way to the movement of ships on water or, for example, the movement of people on the wobbly bridge um, outside the Tate? <laughs> and are there kind of lessons that can be transferred across you know, different areas? Well, certainly in the latter example you gave, the <coughs> fundamental problem as I understand it with the bridge was precisely a resonance between its uh, characteristic flexural frequency and the cadence of the people walking on it. And this is a, a standard problem in construction all the time. Uh, it's also a problem in the military. I think when soldiers walk across a bridge, they're told not to walk in perfect lockstep because they will excite some kind of motion on the bridge. But that requires that you know what the characteristic frequencies are of the bridge. And I think that in the end, what was discovered was that there were some modes of motion that were maybe not anticipated originally and had to be had to have their frequencies changed by adding masses and dampers and things, so as to be out of resonance with the cadence of the pedestrians. About, about ships, I would say I, d I know less, but there might be issues, for instance, if you think about uh, a swimming pool on a cruise ship, the back and forth motion of the ship will, of course, set in motion the surface of the swimming pool, and you can get sloshing. That's another example of a parametric excitation. And another Ig Nobel Prize was actually awarded to someone who studied the properties of walking with a cup of coffee. Because as you walk, you of course excite the surface up and down and it starts sloshing. And so what's the right frequency to walk so you don't spill your coffee? Very important problem. <laughs>